So welcome to Techno Dad Life where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode we're going to be installing Portainer which is a Docker management program. And so Portainer has a little, some more advanced features uh, than our regular Docker program in OpenMedia Vault. So it's going to be good for some people. It is a little more complicated though. And so today's question of the day is, what do you use Docker for? And just down below, why don't you write what you use your Docker for on your Open Media Vault? And as always, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And here we go now. Okay, first we're gonna go to Docker, click on that, and we're gonna go over to the box and type in Portainer. And then we're gonna click on Portainer, and actually we're gonna click on the info button first, and that will take us to the uh, Docker page, and then we're gonna click on deploy Portainer, and then here you can see are the envir environmental variables we need. So next we're gonna click start, and then click close when that's done. And then we're gonna go over to Portainer there and then highlight it and click run image. We're gonna call that Portainer. Restart policy always, bridge mode, host port 9000, hit the plus sign. We're going to leave the environmental variables. We're gonna hit slash and data. Then we're gonna go over to our network and go to app data, make a new folder. We're gonna call that portainer. We're gonna close that. Let's click on the host path, shared folders, app data, portainer, and okay, hit the plus sign. And next we're gonna add in a variable down here in the extra arguments. And so we're going to go to our page here. And so here we're gonna copy this here. So the v slash var is docker. We're going to paste that into our extra arguments here and just make sure there's no spaces or anything in front of that and then click save. And so now that's up and running. And so now we're going to copy our IP address and then we're going to paste that and then we're going to put colon 9000 and hit enter. And so here we're at the portainer uh, login page or the admin login page. So we're first going to put in a password. So let's do that first and then confirm that password and then create user. And so we're going to click on local. And so we already added these. So we're going to click connect. And so here, if you click on local, you can see we have seven images installed. Uh, actually, let's just go through these one at a time. So first we click on images and here you can see we have Home Assistant, DOSBox, Let's Encrypt, Nextcloud, Sonar, Pi-hole, and Portainer there. So if we go back, we click on containers and this is the containers running and so we just have Portainer running and volumes and so these are the Docker volumes that we have and then networks and so basically these are the basically the host network the docker bridge network and the pi net is the mac vlan that we created for the pi hole and so if we go back down here you can see it has app templates and so these are to install popular uh, dockers and again the containers images networks volumes are all going down the side here Events uh, says what's happened, tells about your Docker engine. You can change users, create teams, endpoints, registries, and settings for Portainer. So let's go back to our dashboard. Okay, so now let's try adding a container. So let's go over here to containers. And so the first thing we're going to see are all these different things up here. These only change color when you actually uh, check mark something. So there you can see we can stop, kill, restart. Since that's our portainer and we're using it, we're not going to do that. So let's click on the Tor Simple and let's click Restart. 
and now you can see that is running. So next we're going to go over here to add container and let's click add container. And here you can see it looks quite a bit different than what we're used to in Open Media Vault. So basically it has the same functionality and a little more complex, but also the ability to add or uh, sort of have a few advanced features too. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the jacket. So let's go to the Linux server jacket one. And so let's copy this name. And so the image name we would put down here and the container name would be uh, jacket. So if you take this name and image name and then we would transfer that over to Open Media Vault. So the docket, Docker image name is first on Open Media Vault and then the container name. Next, uh, publish ports. And so here we can just add, do that and it will expose all the ports in the container. And so here it's 9117. And then if we go back to Open Media Vault, it would be here, expose ports. And on here, oh, uh, we're using a different uh, container, but this one would be 8989. And then you would hit the plus sign. Enable access control. We don't have that on Open Media Vault. And so commands, these would be at the bottom the extra arguments. Volumes would be the same as volumes on Open Media Vault. So network is the same here. And here you can see we have bridge hosts, non Mac VLAN. If we go back to portainer, you can see if we click the down arrow, we have bridge host. And then it actually lists two other ones. So PyNet is my Mac VLAN and container means that it does not have access out of the container. And just out of curiosity, let's click PyNet and it actually doesn't come up with the uh, domain. Next is environmental variables. And so if we go back here, that would be similar to this section right here. Labels, uh, they're not a similar thing in Open Media Vault. Restart policy, simple push buttons, uh, same as Open Media Vaults. Runtime and resources. And so here are some actually really handy things. So you can limit the amount of memory or memory, uh, reserve memory for uh, Docker. Also limit or uh, expand the amount of CPU usage that it can do. The other thing on here you can see is privilege mode, and that would be the same as privilege mode up here in Open Media Vault. And so these you would add in down below in the environment, or excuse me, in the extra arguments. And on Portainer, you can just click them on and off. And so you can see Portainer has a lot of extra features in it, and uh, which can be good, but also confusing. For me, I find Docker uh, setup on Open Media Vault is much simpler. It's the more straightforward, you can say. But Portainer does have extra advanced options for those who need those extra things there. So that's it for today. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.